Hello, welcome back to Lightroom in UK. Today we are doing the 250 mile update review on the New Balance 680v7. It's the last of the budget running shoes I am testing at the minute. It's the third one to reach 250 mile mark. So today I'm just gonna do my update. So yeah, so I'm testing three shoes at the minute. I'm testing the Asics Jolt 3, the Adidas Duramo 10, and the New Balance 680 V7. All three I got for a really low price, so I'm doing this kind of budget shoe experiment to see how good or bad they are. I've done initial runs, 100 mile reviews in all three, um, and this is the final 250 mile review. Uh, I'll, I'll tag all the other videos in the description, and they're also on the Ring Gear review playlist, if you wanna go and watch any of those, if you've missed any of them. So today I said I'm just gonna give my update on the New Balance. Like I said, I've done the initial re review on this, I've done the 100 mile review on this, so today's just literally an update. So yeah, like I mentioned, I'm utilising them all within my training. I'm currently training for my second half marathon of this year. I've utilised them as my own, mainly my only shoes in this year. I had a couple of um, daily trainers from last year, which I, I utilised, but I've retired the, um, one of those now. So these, literally, literally these three shoes are, are kind of the main shoes I, I'm using for pretty much the only shoes I'm using for my half marathon training. I've tended now to use the Asics more for the shorter speed work and stuff because of the firmness of the foam. I've tended to use the Adidas Duramo 10 for more for the recovery day, um, easy day running stuff I've, I've been doing. And this is mainly for my longer, more kind of stained efforts as such. So anything over, 12 kind of k plus i'd tend to grab this definitely everything over 15 16 18k plus i'd definitely grab this one because of the dual density it's a really soft cushion shoe but anyway let's get on with the review so i always start mine with the outsole so the 100 mile review i gave this shoe a 8 out of 10. It, there was a, a tiny bit of slippage on wet on wet um, surfaces it wasn't the greatest of grips purely because of the the design it's almost like a cobblestone effect so it wasn't the grippiest of all outsoles it wasn't a major problem it wasn't slippy all the time just on really wet surfaces mainly wet roads etc there was a bit of slippage as i've obviously worn the shoes more on that kind of initial outlying surfaces worn down now when we went to the into the rubber now properly that, that kind of issue has kind of vanished so outsole i'll give it eight out of ten i'm going to probably stick with that it's it's like i said it's, it's no issues with the outsole it's it's more flexible than the ASICs so it doesn't feel too clumpy there again in terms of my preference there is still quite a lot of rubber on the outsole but again it goes hand in hand with if you don't have a lot then durability sometimes is affected but yeah grip wise no issues it doesn't feel overly clumpy it is the lightest of the three shoes which surprised me again at the, at the initial run and early on in its usage I didn't feel overly light but as the more I'm using it now um you do kind of just forget about the weight of the shoe. It's not a particularly light shoe either, but it's fine. So outsole, I'm going to keep it as 8 out of 10 after 250 miles. Okay, midsole next. So this is the only dual density midsole I've, I've ever run in. Again, I've got a fairly limited previous experience of, of, a, of a range of running shoes, hence why I'm kind of branching out now and starting to experiment with different brands, different types, different um, costs to see what I prefer, which kind of branding which kind of style of running shoe I like the best. I think that's, that's kind of good advice for any runner. Go out there and, and find what, what you find best. Don't listen to everyone else saying this is the best shoe, this is the worst shoe. Some people like rubbish, not rubbish shoes. Some people like shoes that other people don't like and some really popular shoes other people don't get on with at all. So it's the first, this is my first experience with the dual density one. The softer top layer is the softer kind of foam and then underneath that's a slightly firmer foam but again it's still quite a soft squishy foam so you get a nice cushioned initial and then you sink into slightly firmer foam which just stops it obviously sinking too low and bottoming out um this is probably the, well, this definitely is the most comfortable shoe of the three that's why i kind of tend to use it for the longer runs it kind of it kind of protects the legs it takes a lot of the impact away it's a really comfortable shoe to run in. you can run in this all day long and, and not have any issues there's no hot spots you don't get any kind of major issues with your legs in terms of fatigue. So it's really enjoyable midsole. Um, I gave it an eight and a half at the 100 mile review because of those reasons. I'm going to keep it at that. Um, I would like a little bit more kind of pop in terms of propulsion. It would be nice. 
Um, I bought this for fifty pounds, so you can argue that oh well, for fifty pounds, it's, it's you can't get everything. However, it is RIP'd for more like ninety pounds, and, and for a ninety pound shoe, um, I would have liked a bit more. Like I said I, I compare it to what my previous. I've got I've, I've, I've previously used the Reebok Float Ride Energy Series. I've, I've had the three, which I've not long retired. And that's far more propulsive, far more poppy, far more enjoyable to run in. It's obviously not dual density, but it, it has a, still has a squishy foam underfoot. So I've got the actual Reebok Energy Float Ride 5 lined up. I've already purchased that earlier in the year, but I'm going to hold that back till towards the end of this year, and I'll, I'll review that then. But yeah, so midsole, like I said, really comfortable, really enjoyable, um, yeah, really enjoyable to run in. Really good for longer runs. Like I said, that, that extra stack height and that extra double density is really beneficial for, like I said, for long runs. I've, I've, kind of, I've used this for my first half marathon this year when I set to PB at Chester. So it was useful. However, it doesn't feel like a race shoe. I'll probably I'll probably pick something else for the second half marathon this year. Um, it's a great daily trainer in terms of a longer day, a longer run daily trainer. But I wouldn't again probably use it for a race day effort. Um, but yeah, so eight and a half. I'll stick with that for midsole after two hundred and fifty miles. So it's a double engineered mesh upper. There's not a lot of breathability. Again, I got some close ups. I had a bit, a few concerns about breathability at the start, especially compared to say the Asics again, which has probably the really good breathability on it. However, it, it's it's it doesn't look like it should have great breathability, but it, I've not really had any major issues. It's a non gusseted tongue. Heel counter is not particularly rigid, but is enough cushioning and plushness for again to make it comfortable enough. Like I said, this was the actual the lightest of the three when I, when I weighed them earlier in the series. So the upper I give it a 7.5, I'm probably going to stick to that. I said there's no real overheating issues, it's not the greatest uppers. The lacing is okay but it does come undone a couple of times. It's not the longest of laces. These are all kind of small finicky little issues but again they all kind of add up to why it doesn't get a slightly higher score. So upper, I said it's comfortable, uh, you can get locked down pretty quick, the lacing is okay. But again the lacing with it being the older style, cottony, not... not, not um, Kind of, there's no give in them, there's no elasticity in them, so they do come undone a little bit, especially over, over time. So, uh, yeah, seven and a half for the upper after 250 miles. Okay, so value now, I gave it a seven after 100 miles. Uh, that was again on the back of the, again, I, I purchased the Reebok float ride, again, I, I was comparing them to that was my favorite shoe and still is, to be fair, my favorite shoe of the last couple of past 18 months or so. The Reebok float ride series. It's just, you know, you sometimes you just find a shoe which is just perfect for you. It's a great daily trainer, really enjoyable to run in, quite poppy, um, really squishy, but has a bit of bounce to it. Feels light on foot. The geometry is just um, suitable, great breathability. So the Reebok Flow Ride Energy 3, I was, I was just coming off the back of using that for 12 months, and I grabbed this for a very similar price. I, bought, I got the Reebok for 50 quid, I got this for 50 quid. This being dual density and rip for 90, I was expecting a bit more from it. And again, I use that kind of value against that. that obviously, the RIP price, but obviously, I picked it up for fifty. So, for fifty quid, it's a, it's a kind of a great solid purchase. If I got it for ninety, I would be a, a little bit disappointed with the overall package. Um, so I'm going to creep that up a little bit now to seven and a half. Now I've found it's it's, it's kind of strength that it's better for the longer runs, and and that was the biggest issue with the Reebok Footwear Energy Three that it was it kind of bottomed out after say. Uh, 14, 15k, definitely lower than definitely after 10 miles, it definitely hit hit a hit a plateau where you couldn't really use it beyond that because you you felt like your legs were just getting battered and that the squishiness of the foam wasn't enough. It wasn't enough stack height on the on the shoe, etc. So yeah, this is definitely a stronger, longer run shoe. Again, you can use it for recovery days. I can use it for easy days again to protect the legs. I've I've used it for a half marathon race. I wouldn't use it for anything shorter than that race wise. I would potentially use it for a marathon. Um, again, because of dual density, it would protect the legs a little bit longer on those longer, longer runs. So, value for 50 quid, and it's got a lot of strengths. And again, especially the longer runs, and obviously, up touch with the durability will, will still be there um, to a decent level. So, I'm going to creep up to seven and a half after 250 miles for value. And then, last but not least, durability. So, I gave this a nine out of ten after 100 miles. I, there was literally no wear and tear, so I was pretty confident with the price kind of bracket and the, after 100 miles what I'd what I, what I couldn't see in terms of wear and tear I, I put it put it quite high to nine, 9 out of 10 thinking I was gonna get 500 miles plus at least which is kind of my ballpark I want most of my shoes to hit that window especially with the, the amount I run I, I like to have 500 miles as the bare minimum especially for the prices most people are paying for running shoes these days 
I'm going to actually knock that down a little bit to just a half point to eight and a half for durability now after 250 miles. The outsole is is fine, but there is quite a, a bit of wear now, especially in that right in the centre of that midfoot, uh, forefoot area there. So we're 250 miles in, that will continue to wear, but again, within the next 100, 150 miles, it might wear down quite significantly. It's hard to tell, it's just obviously, this is just a guesstimation, but um, I don't want to keep it to 9 out of 10 if it wears down by, say, 400 miles. I'd rather, again, I want this to get to 500 if possible. That would be nice. Okay, so just to quickly summarise now, the after 100 miles, it got 40 out of 50, which was 80%. And even though there's a few um, score changes now, after 250 miles, it gets, it gets exactly the same score, 40 out of 50, which is 80%. So it's gone up a tiny bit on value, but it's gone down a tiny bit on durability. Um, all three shoes are kind of in the same ballpark. I think they're all getting around the same scores. The Adidas, the Asics, and this—they're all around the same. They're not fantastic shoes, and again, nor should they be for that price price range. This is why it was a budget shoe experiment. But they're also not a terrible shoe. Um, would I recommend this shoe or any of the other three? Any of the other? Any of the other? Uh, budget shoes in the, in the rotation, one hundred percent. If you can get them for the price I got them, or even less on discount, there was nothing wrong with them. If you're a, a real keen runner and, and you're trying to get PBs and you, and you want the best, then obviously it goes without saying these aren't the shoes for you. But if you're looking for just workhorse trainers to, to put within a rotation and you've got your, your expensive race day shoe that you want to just keep for that and you've got also got, again, expensive training shoes, which, again, you don't want to use for your, your dead runs in terms of like your recovery days or just your fat legs or just your unplanned runs that you're just going to go out and do a bit of something. And you want to just a day retrainer, but again, not to not not, not not an inexpensive kind of option. Then any of these three would be fine. Um, like I said, this is this is probably the best of the three in terms of a do it all day retrainer. I prefer the, the Adidas Duramo Ten of the three, but again, that's my personal preference. But in terms of, I, I basically I bought this as a safety net. It was the most expensive of the three. It, it obviously it's a New Balance dual density running shoe. It was it was a safe bet in terms of it was my caution in terms of the other two were terrible and almost unusable as, as regular training running shoes. This would have been the one I would have continued to use. So I say that's the summary. It's a good solid daily trainer. I use it generally now more for the longer runs, um, just because of the just because the way I find the shoe performs best. But yeah, feel free to drop anything in the comments, any questions you've got. As I said, this has been a very popular series, the, the budget running shoe. I think people have been quite interested to see how they've done. Um, I, I was quite interested myself, hence why I did it. I, I think next year I'll do something maybe sim something similar, or I might flip the other way and maybe go and get one expensive shoe and see if that makes a big difference. But yeah, I'm going to continue. Every year I'll, I'll generally reinvest in, in a new rotation as such, and I'll test them throughout the year. So... Um, like I said, I've got the Reebok Float Ride Energy 5 lined up towards the end of this year. I'll start re, uh, sort of start using and testing that and reviewing that towards the end of this, this year. But as always, thank you for watching. Like I said, feel free to look back through the playlist if you've missed any of the previous reviews. Um, and look out, like I said, for upcoming upcoming views. I won't do any more in-depth reviews now. Obviously, I won't. There's the next milestones, 500 miles. If I get to those milestones with any of the three shoes within the training, I'll do a quick, up, a very quick kind of mention or update in an overview video but i want to do another in-depth review individually per shoe so as always thank you for watching uh, i do appreciate everyone taking the time out to watch my reviews watching my channel um i said drop anything in the comments and i'll see everyone on the next one